This country was once the personal property of the former King of Belgium. Welcome to Opentiera. Today, we're embarking on a journey through the complex history and vibrant culture of the Democratic Republic of Congo, also known as Congo Kinshasa. Distinct from the Republic of Congo, which has a similar name but is a completely separate country. Stick around till the end to uncover the untold stories that shape the heart and soul of this remarkable land. The country spans over 2.3 million square kilometers of land in the heart of Africa. The Democratic Republic of Congo is almost nine times larger than the Republic of Congo. The mighty Congo River bisects the country, providing its namesake as it winds over 4,700 kilometers past lush rainforests towards the Atlantic Ocean. This powerful waterway and its many tributaries intertwine the land, providing food, resources and transportation routes for the people scattered across the Congo Basin. To the east, spectacular Virunga Mountains dot the Albertine Rift Valley, creating dramatic peaks sheltering rare mountain gorillas. Alongside sandy beaches lining the eastern borders, Grassy savannas populate the landscape to the south, shaping the Katanga Plateau. Dense tropical rainforests fill in the core and north centralized by the huge Congo Basin, harboring endangered wildlife like forest elephants, okapi and chimpanzees. From the glacial Rwenzori Mountains, marking the highest point at 5,119 meters, to the humid Cuvette Central Depression, only 330 meters above sea level, the DR Congo holds some of the most extreme geographical contrasts across the entire African continent. The Democratic Republic of Congo has endured a painful history, dominated by greed and power struggles, leaving a legacy of human suffering. Prior to European colonization, the area was populated by Central African groups like the Kuba, Luba and Mongo people who sustained themselves through fishing, hunting and agriculture. However, in the late 1800s, Belgian King Leopold II made the land his own personal venture, brutally exploiting the Congolese population for labor and resources. Under Leopold's vicious 23-year reign, in the so-called Congo Free State. The Congolese were subjected to horrific atrocities as they were forced to harvest ivory and rubber to line the pockets of their tyrannical colonizer. It's estimated that between 1885 and 1908, as many as 10 million native Congolese died from execution, disease, starvation or exhaustion induced by Leopold's harsh demands for labor and resources to enrich himself. International outrage finally forced Belgium to make Congo into an official colony in 1908, but the Congolese continued to lack basic rights and self-determination for decades under strict colonial authority, focused primarily on extracting copper, diamonds and valuable minerals. Resentment steadily grew, erupting into an independence movement in the late 1950s, led by the charismatic Patrice Lumumba alongside Joseph Kasavubu. However, within just a few years, political opposition and Belgian interference enabled Joseph Mobutu to seize control in a 1965 military coup. The country was named the Republic of Zaire in 1971. As Zaire's authoritarian dictator from 1965-1997, Mobutu amassed a personal fortune of $5 billion, leaving the economy and infrastructure to ruin while brutally silencing dissent and enriching his inner circle. The 1990s brought explosive ethnic tensions and horrific violence to Congo, as the First and Second Congo Wars erupted, drawing over seven neighboring countries into the fray in a devastating conflict driven by natural resource disputes and underlying ethnic hostilities left over from years of colonial rule. As competing factions fed off long-held grudges and stockpiles of mineral wealth, 
It's estimated that 3.3 million people died from starvation, disease, or violence, while millions more were displaced in over a decade of horrific bloodshed. The conflict finally calmed by 2003, but Congo's troubles persist as government corruption and inadequate rule of law hamper reconciliation efforts, while militias still terrorize vulnerable populations to control mines. Over 120 years since Leopold first ravaged the country, Congo's citizens still await stability, justice, and human rights progress. The Democratic Republic of the Congo is home to over 200 different ethnic groups, creating a vast cultural diversity across the country. The World Bank estimates the population of the DRC to be about 99 million. The population of the Democratic Republic of Congo is almost 18 times more than the Republic of Congo. The four largest ethnicities are the Mongo, Luba, Congo and Mangbetu Azande groups. The Mongo live mainly in the central and northern regions running from Kisangani to Kinshasa. The Luba originate from the Kasai regions in the south-central DRC. The Congo occupy the western regions from the capital city Kinshasa and across the border into Angola. Finally, the Mangbetu Azande inhabit the northeastern Orientala province. Religiously, over 80% of Congolese identify as Christian, which is a legacy from Belgian colonial influence in the late 1800s. However, many individuals still practice traditional African spiritual beliefs by honoring ancestors and following local rituals led by tribe elders or spiritual guides. A minority of around 10% of people follow Islam, mostly Sunni concentrated in the communities near the eastern borders. Linguistically French is the official language used in education, government and formal national commerce. However, only about half the population speaks French, which highlights the robust native diversity still thriving across the DRC countryside. Within the four major tribal languages, Kikongo, Lingala, Swahili and Chiluba have about 10 million native speakers each. But Swahili speakers cemented themselves as the commercial trade language in Eastern Congo. Overall, an impressive total of over 700 different dialects can be heard echoing throughout the land. The Democratic Republic of the Congo is full of natural resources, including mineral and metal resources, fertile soil, ample rainfall and abundant biodiversity. However, years of conflict, instability, corruption and mismanagement have prevented the Congolese economy from reaching its potential. The Congo has the world's largest reserves of cobalt and significant reserves of copper, diamonds, gold, tin, manganese and uranium. Mining is the country's biggest industry, accounting for nearly one-third of its $55 billion GDP. Major multinational mining companies dominate this capital-intensive sector attracted by the Congo's rich deposits. Meanwhile, artisanal and small-scale mining employs around 2 million Congolese. The Congo's other economic mainstays are agriculture and forestry, which employ nearly 70% of the workforce. Main cash crops include coffee, palm oil, rubber, cotton, sugar, tea and cocoa. However, the majority of Congolese farmers work on subsistence farms, growing manioc, plantains, maize, peanuts and root vegetables. Only 2% of the Congo's land area is cultivated, so unlocking the country's agricultural potential through improved infrastructure and policies could transform livelihoods. Across the hundreds of ethnic groups dotting the countryside, rituals and folklore have been passed for generations through dance, music, and oral storytelling. The Bambuti and Batwa Pygmy tribes perform spiritual ceremonies to honor the forest spirits that protect their hunting livelihoods. Among the agrarian Luba people, 
elaborate coming-of-age rites of passage, prepare youth for communal responsibility. Masked Kumu dancers channel ancestral spirits to intervene in community matters. These time-honored customs reinforce cultural pride and community bonds. World-famous Congolese painters like Sherry Samba and Mok infuse vibrant colors and scenes, satirizing modern life into their canvases. Intricate luba masks and bambuti forest spirit statues preserve cultural symbols carved into wood and ivory. Traditional hand-woven raffia textiles with kuba designs colorfully depict royalty and mythological tales. Food is central to Congolese cultural life, with traditional dishes playing an important role in community gatherings and celebrations across the country. Staple ingredients like cassava, plantains and chili peppers are transformed into mouth-watering meals that offer a burst of flavors. A pillar of Congolese cooking is liboke, tasty meat skewers popular on the streets of Kinshasa. Beef or chicken pieces are seasoned and grilled on an open fire or cooked until tender in a peanut sauce stew. Liboke is often served with a side of fufu, a stiff dough made of cassava and corn flour. Fufu, made from boiling and pounding bundles of cassava leaves into submission, is a beloved staple across Congolese home kitchens. This hardy carb is used to scoop up rich and spicy stews, as well as creamy peanut or pumpkin leaf sauces eaten communally from a shared plate. And no Congo meal is complete without chikwangi, a nutritious steamed bread made from cassava flour wrapped in banana leaves or ndundu leaves before being boiled for extra taste. Chikwangi soaked in black tea or coffee makes a popular breakfast. The variations of cooking techniques applied to cassava highlight the skill and creativity flowing from Congolese kitchens. If you enjoyed this video on the Democratic Republic of Congo, you'll love this next one.